Blessings, friends. This is Bishop Andre Woods, and I want to welcome you to this edition of This Is My Story. We thank God for this wonderful Lord's Day. It's going to be a good day. It already is a good day, and we thank God for you, those of you joining us today. We are live right here on the Bishop Andre S. Woods Facebook page. This is what I want you to do for me. I want you to like and share, like and share, and start your watch parties. We got a very important, distinguished guest today, and uh, I want you uh, to hear the story of our guest's journey. Our guest today is going to be none other than Detroit's own Dr. Kim Logan Nolan. I'm sure all of you know that name uh, for many years. And I just want to share just some information on Dr. Kim Logan Nolan uh, to introduce her to our platform today. She's an entrepreneur, speaker, author, actress, licensed clinical uh, psycho psychologist uh, and counselor, professor, executive of life coach and TV host, uh, Kim Logan Nolan, PhD, LPC, BCPC, CCFC, ACAC, I am M. FC, MFT, AA, FLT, or just Dr. Kim, as she affectionately is called. Uh, she is affectionately called by audiences as a dynamic speaker who always leaves her audience spellbound. As president, CEO of Kim Logan Communications, for over 37 years, she has trained and counseled people from all walks of life to be inspired and how uh, your words can change your choices and your life. She holds a bachelor's of science degree in special education, master's of arts degree in family and guidance counseling, and a doctorate of philosophy degree uh, in oral, uh, in personal communication, interpersonal communications and clinical family counseling. Dr. Kim is certified in prevention of age specialists, substance and sex abuse counseling. Dr. Kim is a proud alumni of Oak, Oakwood College University and Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan. Dr. Logan also uh, uh, is a part of the Oakland University Detroit chapter membership chair. Dr. Logan also serves as professor of speech communications for Wayne County Community College District. As a national inspirational motivational speaker, Autorico brings, brings encouragement, direction, hope, and healing to thousands each year as she travels around the United States and abroad. Dr. Kim is a three-year survivor of breast cancer, and her daughter, Micah, also radio personality in Huntsville, Alabama, is a seven-year uh, survivor. Together, they speak to encourage others of all ages. She is a gifted woman on a mission to help others discover their gifts. She has also been granted hundreds of awards and achievements of community service. Dr. Kim Logan has conducted conferences, seminars, radio, television, and teaching the importance of living to be well for over 36 years. Dr. Logan, Kim Logan uh, Nolan served as speech communication clinician uh, for the Knox of the Crunk, I'm sorry, Crunk boxing team and the Lady Manuel Stewart and is currently a certified clinician for the National Basketball Association and recently selected as a new mental health uh, psychology, psychology um, counselor uh, for the Judge Mathis show. Oh, so impressive. Along with her late husband uh, and professional therapist, Arthur Nolan, L-M-S-W-C-C-C-A-A-C-D, uh, they met uh, the needs of hurting individuals and families as Christian family therapists and counselor in their private practice in Detroit, Michigan. The Nolas served as co-directors of the Family Life Department of the Lake, uh, Lake Region Conference 
uh, from 2007 to 2014. They also served as co-hosts of Making It Work Television and 3ABE and Dare to Dream Network in the fall of 2017. Live to be well uh, with Dr. Kim. Dr. Kim also, and her, with her late husband, Arthur Nolan, uh, authored five published books, The Attitude Adjustment of Christian Man and Woman, Refusing a Direct Order, Friends in the Bedroom, But Strangers in Church and Marriage, Living the Unex Unexplainable, uh, I See You, uh, Can Our Marriage Survive or Not? Oh, so impressive. Listen, in the fall of 2020, uh, there's new release probably coming in the spring of 2021. I think I got that right. Yeah, 2021, uh, co-signing bad behavior by commission or omission. Dr. Kim continues to be a con contributing writer for Message Magazine, The Drama Files, and Bounce Back Relationship Articles, Marriage.com, radio host on uh, 361ccradio.com, and the television host, Live to Be Well, on 3ABN Dare and Two, tele Dare Two Dream uh, Television Christian Network. She is a host of Live to Be Well every two on Tuesdays at 9.15 p.m. on Facebook Live and other social media outlets. All my friends, I want to introduce to you our guest today who lives to inspire others and inspire to live well, uh, my friend and my sister, Dr. Kim Logan. Welcome, Dr. Logan. Hi, how are you? Oh, listen, listen. Uh, I am excited to have you with me today. So, I mean, your, I mean, when I read your, your bio, I know this is only a drop in the bucket because we're talking about over 30, almost close to 40 years uh, of how you have used your practice and uh, as a ministry uh, to the community. And we thank God for you. Uh, uh, I remember uh, uh, years ago, I think it's the Grand River site. Yes. Uh, came over there one time and toured and, and saw all that you do. And, I, and there's so much that you've left out that we're going to get to. Uh, as we talk today. Listen, I just want you to share with uh, our audience today uh, how your journey began and how it was that you became interested in servicing the community uh, in such a professional way. You took the time to matriculate through school and get the necessary certification so that you can come back and be a definite help and a credit to our community. Just take your time and walk us through the Kim Logan Nolan journey. Well, praise God. And I want to say hello to all your viewers. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Andre Woods. Um, the journey itself began as a child. I was um, diagnosed with several disabilities in um, my early education. Uh, elementary years. I had stuttering issues. I had issues with learning disability. I was diagnosed with learning disability. Um, at that time, back in the 50s, early 60s, they didn't know what to call it, but they said I was just slow. Well, my mother and father did not just accept that. Um, I think that my Christian walk, being in the church, I was a member of the Burns Avenue Seventh-day Adventist Church, um, you know, as, as a young child, and I'm still serving my church today, the City Temple Seventh-day Adventist Church on Grand River. But knowing that it was not going to be easy because of my disability, but I worked hard and I was laughed at, I was spat upon, I was kicked, I was bullied. I saw bullying very early in the 50s and 60s. You're different, why do you talk that way? And I had a severe stuttering problem and my brother Kirk stuttered. And so, you know, we were there to support one another. Uh, stuttering is a learned behavior. So from there, I wanted to study under, and understand speech and language pathology. I wanted to understand sign language. And my brother, Derek, he was the one who got me into sign language with God's hands of praise. 
Uh, he's passed on now, but he said, you need to have more skills when you go to college and take on more opportunities, you know, play the piano. I don't play like you, Minister Woods, but you know, I, I dabble a little bit, something, something. But I learned to play, I learned to, you know, utilize the skills that I did have because I didn't um, have the ability to speak well. And so with 27 years of speech therapy, 27 years, and I began to use the gifts and talents. And I went on to college. I went on, started at Wayne County Community College. And um, my mother and father wanted me to stay home my freshman year because they were afraid because of my disability, I would be taken advantage of. But my sophomore year, I headed on down to Oakwood University in Huntsville, Alabama. That was the first time I saw red dirt. I never saw red dirt before. And I was embraced by other Christian brothers and sisters who I am still in the sister brotherhood today. And um, I began to learn how to utilize, because there were speakers and musicians and preachers and educators. And you know, you just couldn't come and just be still. But I had to go back to Burns because my mother and a woman named Lucille Shade would get me up front and she would have me do the welcome. And sometimes I would be good, 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 good morning and welcome to our church. Some people laugh, some of my peers, but week after week after week, they did not allow me to sit down. And then, and then I grew into other things in the church. So at Oakwood, I utilized that speaking ability. I wanted to overcome that ability and I wanted to pursue my degree in speech pathology and communications. And so I loved acting, I loved theater, I loved doing all types of dramatizations and plays, but that meant I had to develop my speaking skill. I had to come out of my comfort zone and the Lord had a plan for my life. Um, I also attended Alabama A&M because they had the speech pathology program and we had a co-op program with um, Oakwood University. Their students would come to Oakwood, we would go to A&M, a great relationship. Well, after leaving there, I came on to Wayne State and then went on to Connecticut State College and came back to Wayne State where I earned uh, my master's in family counseling. I did a shift, God was shifting me. And then earning my doctorate in um, communication and psychological counseling. Never planned on going into psychological counseling. Counseling was never something I wanted to do, but it was something God wanted me to do. Well, when I came back to Detroit, um, I started working with the Emmanuel Stewart and uh, Mr. Mel Farr and Mr. Dave Bing helped me to penetrate into and migrate into the NBA, NFL, and into the Kronk boxing. And relationships matter, Bishop Woods, it matters. And I built those relationships with those three men and they helped me to expand the territory. Then I met with a great man by the name of Mayor Coleman Young. I was sitting outside his office and a gentleman by the name um, of, uh, came out, Anthony Adams. He was the attorney for uh, Coleman Young at the time. He says, can I help you? And I was sitting there crying because I didn't know how to navigate through the city county building. I didn't know who to talk to, but I knew I had a dream. I had a vision. And then um, he took me into the mayor's office and I met Coleman, a mayor, the late Mayor Coleman Young. He says, so tell me your vision. Tell me your dream. And I said, I want to help people learn to communicate. I want to work with athletes. I want to do counseling. I want to help the city of Detroit police department, the sheriff's department, fire department, the school teachers. That day, he gave me a contract with the city workers to work with them how to answer the telephones, how to articulate. He said, I don't know what you can do with me, but I'm a, I'm a work. He said, but I want you to do one thing, he said. He said, you cannot leave Detroit. If we give you these contracts, and he said, are you a daughter of Detroit? And I said, I'm an east side daughter of Detroit. He said, you must spend your money in Detroit, live in Detroit, and have your business in Detroit. And I said, I can never leave Detroit. He said, you can never leave Detroit. And pastor, I've never left Detroit. 
I've never left my roots. And so with that, the doors opened and um, I was blessed to meet the late, um, uh, he was doing a movie, Commander Gil Hill. Uh, then I met the late Orthea Barnes. And then I met you, I was over at the St. James Missionary Baptist Church where I met the late, you know, Velma Willis. And I met you and Minister Belinda and David Scott. And just, it went on from there. All of you began to embrace me and allowed me to be a part of what you were doing. And then you got me my first radio show. Do you remember that? Down on Jefferson, 1400 AM radio. You took me in that office and said, this woman needs to be on radio. And I got my first radio show because of you. And I praise God for you because you can't forget from whence you come whose shoulders you stand on. And from there, it led to me meeting Mr. Barton Cable, Barton, uh, Don Barton, getting a TV show on Barton Cable. Then it went to Comcast Cable. And then I remember this lady who helped me get through high school, boarding school, um, Adelphian Academy, a Seventh-day Adventist school in Holly, Michigan. She and her husband helped pay my tuition. And she said, one day, one day I will come back for a favor. I thought I was right inside of a Godfather movie, Pastor. And she said to me, uh, one day a call will come. And the call came. And I was doing TV. I was doing radio. I was writing some books and plays. And she called. And she said, I need you to meet me at this address. I said, well, I can't do it today. She said, oh, no, no, no. No, it's not an option. Whatever you have to do, you have to stop doing it. And I met her at this address and I walked in and I'm like, you know, wow, they really must love this person. And out of nowhere comes this little bitty lady with a picture of me asking me for my autograph. And it was the late mother Rosa Parks. And I'm like, the lady who paid for me to go to school some 20 years ago, end up being the nurse for mother Rosa Parks. And Mother Rosa Parks was watching me every day on Barton Cable and Comcast Cable. Then she asked me to be the speaker from the South to the North Railroad. And then she came when I opened my clinic over on my offices over on Grand River, Mother Rosa Parks, uh, Councilman Nicholas Hood, the late senior Hood, Marianne Mahaffey, Orthea Barnes, they all came over, but Mother Parks cut the red ribbon to my offices. You don't know how God is putting you in place and setting you up. And even when she was about to die, they called me and said, we want God's hands of praise to minister at the, Art, the African American Museum for 45 minutes to an hour in front of her casket. Do you know how honored I was that she had picked my choir because we had gone to St. Matthew's Church. I had spoken for Women's Day. And all these relationships, the woman from my high school, my church, who allowed my, me to be a part of, she said she wouldn't take no as an option. So from there, um, I started working with um, the former boxing commissioner, who uh, Stuart Kirschenbaum. And then that opened the door to work with prisoners and then the doors opened to work with NBA players, NFL players, Willie Gaunt, Walter Payton. Mel Farr was amazing, introducing me to Gene Upshaw, uh, the executive director of the NFL at that time. And it's true, I can make the introduction, but you've got to go in there and sell yourself. And he said, if you can get three NFL players on board with your program with communication, teaching them how to get ready for transitioning from football, basketball, boxing, to be, you know, news anchors, you know, because my mother said, when you turn on the television, what don't you see? And I didn't see black athletes commentating. That wasn't something blacks did. So then I said, I want to open a program to help ministers, teachers, athletes, anyone who wants to learn how to speak for success how to communicate effectively. And then I went and met with the Baptist Council. 
And then they started sending ministers to me to help me with help them with their speaking, with their preaching styles. And that opened up another door. And then the Detroit Public Schools, you know, uh, the late Arthur, I mean, Arthur Jefferson, uh, Dr. Arthur Jefferson heard my pitch. He said, can you do that for schools? Can you go in and teach young people in motivation and articulation and diction? I said, I can. Now the same school, Detroit Public Schools fired me because I was teaching black students how to speak well. My principal, he reprimanded me. He was a white principal. And he said, pastor, don't worry about teaching black children how to speak. Let them say dope. Let them say going to the stove. Who cares if black children don't know how to speak well? Well, I did. And the same school that let me go, I ended up getting a contract to go back with my own program called Kim Logan Communications. And since that time, Pastor, things have opened up globally with TV shows, radio shows, books, speaking engagements worldwide. And recently, now becoming the psychological counselor for the Judge Greg Matthews show. God took a little girl that stuttered, who had learning disability, and, and Pastor, let me say this, adding and subtraction still comes hard for me, but I can do statistics. I can do upper division math. God still had a plan for this little girl. And today now, I am here in Detroit, in the Fisher Building. And I remember walking through the Fisher Building when I was just 12 years old. And I said, someday I wanna be a doctor in this building. And a white woman said to my mother, that will never happen. And my mother said, when the time comes, God will plant her. So when my building burned down, the offices on Grand River burned down in 2013, my husband said to me, where do you wanna go? And the Lord reminded me, he does not forget our prayers that you wanted to be in the Fisher Building. And now I've been here seven years practicing psychological counseling, speech and language therapy, and doing what I do for the Lord. And I will continue by his God, by his grace, until he calls me to rest. Now, now that, see, I knew, I knew it was more to this story than was on paper. That that is an awesome testimony. You talking about walking into Mayor Coleman Young's office? Uh, you called some names. I remember Mary Ann Mahaffey, uh, Mother Rosa Parks. All of that history uh, is so blessed, and and uh, well, you deserve it. Deserve every 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 accolade that you can get. Cause uh, I remember years ago, where, like you said, over there on Grand River. And, and uh, God, I tell you, I remember your, your brother, such an awesome musician, choir director. I mean, he would hang out with us sometime late on Sunday nights, yeah. you know, come by him and Theodore. And, yeah. and I mean, all of those guys from, from way back then, uh, we just thank God for their memory and sharing with us. And uh, now talk about uh, uh, your practice, and and how God blessed you and your late husband to y'all and in this in this in this bio y'all did so much in such a little time. Little time, yes. I mean, uh, talk about how all of that came about, and in the midst of doing all of this this counseling and sharing, you had time to to, to write five books five and books. do a television show and. Uh, just give us a synopsis of all of how all that came together. Well, I was, um, Dionne Warwick was in town. She was the um, ambassador for AIDS for President Bush Sr. And um, she wanted to meet with some of those individuals who had AIDS organization and uh, um, dealing with prevention education. When my husband worked for an agency, I had my own. Well, we, she needed some hosts and hostesses at her event. So we went and I met my husband at that event. I walked in past and said, that's gonna be my husband. I knew it. Well, he saw me a few days later and he didn't recognize me. He said, I had on a big hat, you know? 
And then um, I invited him to do my radio show at 1400, but he sent his, his boss, Voice Robinson, the late Voice Robinson. So I say, well, God, what you want me to do? So one of his coworkers was giving a cabaret. And I said, well, I don't go to cabarets. And she said, if I get Arthur, no, I said, if you can get Arthur Nolan to come, I'll, I'll buy some tickets. Arthur Nolan walked in and he was single. And um, he said, he spoke to me, he was very nice. And um, I said, so what you looking for, Mr. Nolan? He said, I'm looking for growth. And I was like, oh, okay. So I get home and I call my mom. My mom said, well, how did he go meeting him? I said, oh, mom, he said, he's looking for growth. And he said, she said, girl, he's looking to grow with somebody. He gave you the right answer. So a few weeks later, he met me for lunch. He told me about his life, being in Vietnam, told me he, had, he was divorced, he had one son, and that he was looking to date and marry and have more children. I said, whoa. So um, I said, so what's your plan? And I prayed for a social worker and pastor, he was a social worker, okay? Mm -hmm. I wanted to do, I wanted to go and practice. I wanted him, I wanted my new husband to join my practice. And so, from there, I told him my dream, my vision, and then um, he joined my church. And three years later, we were married. And then out of that birthed him coming together with me. Um, he got his master's, his LMSW. Uh, he got his certification in drug addiction. And he joined my practice on Grand River, which gave it a great balance. You know, a man and woman doing couples counseling. We were able to minister together. We were elected family life leaders of our church, then family life leaders of our conference. And he was the president of the Motor City Federation for 11 years. And I mean, miracle after miracle, God was moving so quickly because God knew that he was about to close his life out. We began to write one book, Attitude Adjustment of the Christian Man and Woman and then dealing with relationships and fears and challenges. Then we, then I wrote a book, Refusing a Direct Order and what people do and what I went through, my shopping addiction. And my husband said, we have to get you some help. People don't realize that addictions destroy families. And my husband helped me to stop shopping because I wouldn't have anything today, Pastor. I would be, I wouldn't have anything. This business, our homes, nothing. And God delivered me. I shop every now and then, Pastor, but nothing like I went through getting delivered. Then, and you know me, I love to dress. I love to look good. I'm, you know, Derek, my family, we are dressers, but it cannot be your end all. So from there, we wrote another book, you know, Friends in the Bedroom and Friends in, you, you know me in the bedroom, but you don't know me at church, okay? and how relationships are brewing in the church and nobody is doing anything about it. Then we wrote a book called Living with the Unexplainable. How do I stay in my marriage and I don't understand you? He used to walk in the house and say, Kim, we need to write a book. I said, because he said, because I don't understand you, Kim. So he, we started writing a book on how we live together, but yet we're different personalities. Then we wrote the book, um, um, I see you, can my marriage survive or not? When you walk into IC, the IC unit, it's serious business. When these couples come to us, they are in intensive care mode. Their marriage is either about to die or they're going to be going on, they've got the cold blue, cold blue here, Dr. Kim. And then from there, um, he got sick. And um, shortly after that, he passed away in October 30th, 2016. But before he passed, he was able to see the fruition of his dreams and be able to see God bring them about. I just released my new book called Co-Signing Bad Behavior by Commission and Omission because uh, I was asked to talk about some of the issues that was going on with the R&B singer, things that's going on within the church, things going on in the White House. And they said there was no book out there that could identify. They said, Dr. Kim, you got to write a book. And I said, my husband and I started a book, a manuscript. Let me pull it out. And now this book was just released May 26, 2021. 
And so now I have two new books coming out about relationships and children losing a parent. So my husband, everything I prayed for, he was ready, radio, TV, you met him, pastor. Everything we wanted to do, everything I asked God to do, God did. As a matter of fact, I'm sitting in his office right now. That's his picture behind me. I am sitting in his office because we, my, his office was here. My office is right next door. And so we worked together. We loved together. We had our children together. We worshiped together. And I say this to anyone who's thinking about dating or getting married, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Please have premarital counseling before you get married. Make sure that you are speaking the same language. You got different love languages, but make sure you're speaking the same language. And pastor, I tell you now how much I miss him because now I do this and it's hard. That's how, you know, um, my new company came about. My board of directors was asking me, I said, I'm done. I'm finished. I'm done speaking, no radio, television, nothing. And my board member asked me, Al Rogers, he said to me, well, what do you want to do? I said, I told you I'm done. He asked me again, what do you want to do? I said, why do you keep asking me that question? He said, what do you want to do? And I said, I'm just trying to live to be well. And that birthed my new company. It birthed my new TV show. It birthed the new radio show. It birthed the logo. It birthed the breast cancer. It birthed the breast cancer march. It birthed all the things that God is doing. Because Arthur and I had making it work, building bridges, breaking barriers. But God said, I'm going to do a new thing in you, Kim. I'm going to do a new thing. So that's how Live to Be Well. And now I do that program every Tuesday night with my daughter, Micah breast cancer survivors. I have a breast cancer program. Then um, uh, Texas reached out to me, Corpus Christi, Texas, asking me to be the psychologist for their radio show. So I do that show every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 p.m. And so God is constantly open up doors. And then I was asked, I was a call came from the Judge Greg Mathis show. And Judge Greg Mathis and I go back many, many as children and teenagers, and um, they had looked at a lot of different psychologists. They said 300, but something kept bringing them back to me. And it was the word Christian in my bio on psychology today, on my website, Christian psychotherapist, Christian psychologist, Christian psychological counselor. And they said, you are what we want. Greg Mathis didn't even know. He called me and said, what's going on? And I said, your team, God, and I told Greg, you remember 21 years ago, I told Greg, I said, wouldn't it be great to work together? 21 years later, here we are working together and trying to help people move forward in their lives. And my new book, Collective Trauma, Intentional Mindset for Change. And we're gonna be writing that together from a perspective of political and the judicial system with psychological counseling. And then my next book that we released very shortly, Emotional Affairs. You want a relationship, but you don't know how to be relational. And so God just keeps pouring out of me and pouring out of me and doing a book on grief. So writing, speaking, and now I just found out that one of my TV networks has picked me up with another network, a Christian network has picked me up and I'm excited about my Live to Be Well show now on two different networks worldwide now. So whatever the Lord wants me to do, Pastor, I'm going to do, and I'm here for you. And I thank you for this platform, you know, and uh, when you met me, I was trying to navigate and, you know, connect and um, uh, started my organ lessons after hearing you play. Oh, glory, glory. And um, I said, oh, just healing and, and it has been a healing for me, says my husband. My two daughters now, Micah and Aaron, live in Los Angeles, California, and they needed a new start. They missed their father very much and uh, they're doing very, very well in school and working. And uh, Micah is still, the, she's now the new um, um, program director, music director for her radio station. 
in Huntsville, Alabama, also breast cancer awareness spokesperson. And Aaron is in the school of New York Film Academy, New York Film um, of Art and Acting out in Los Angeles. And we're excited about everything that God is doing in both their lives. So I'm here, Pastor, doing what God needs me to do and moving forward. My God, that, that's, that's awesome. Because listen, let, let me just be transparent. Everything you talking about, you know, I know you said you met with the Baptist Pastors Council, but uh, uh, we need this for our preachers, our apostles, for the fivefold ministry. Because a lot of times, I know even my own personal experience, a lot of times we, we don't know, we misjudge how to balance because we so ministry oriented and minded my musical career. And uh, uh, when I got married, I was, it was late in life. Mm -hmm. I was all right at 40, almost. I was at 40. And, and uh, uh, a lot of times I talked to a lot of my friends because the group that I work with, and that might be something we'll talk about later, but the group that I work with, the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches, USA, you know, we have this thing called pastor to pastor. And we use that time to just open up and be transparent and to counsel each other, pray together and help each other. But then there are some areas like what you're talking about that uh, we need perhaps another voice for all of us. You understand what I'm saying? Because even in ministers who have family, who have wives and uh, have children, and even to uh, the guys that and uh, uh, women in ministry who might be single, because nowadays all over the country, it's it's a lot of single people in ministry, men and women, and they have to navigate through how to handle dating while saved, dating while pastoring, and and dating and got children and been divorced. It's a lot to deal with. And uh, uh, what you're talking about, we'll have to get together on this. But uh, this this is so vital to our existence. Now, your program lived to be well. I mean, I, I've seen it. And what I love about uh, the way you do it is that you keep it so real and uh, 100, as the kids say. You keep yeah. it 100, Dr. Dr. Kim Logan Nolan, keeping it 100. I mean, you talk about every area of our lives, mm -hmm. not just the spiritual side, but uh, the mental side, the emotional side, you know? And, and I, I was laughing behind the camera scene when you said you had to work on this thing with your shopping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You love to shop. Listen, love. I, know, I, know, I know what you're talking about, because I've had that problem myself. We were so bad. We had we had a little club <laughs> among the fellas that uh, every three months of the year, whoever birthday uh, would fall during that time, we were going shopping trips. Oh, I mean, and, and every weekend, even in the city of Detroit and other places, right. Chicago wasn't that far. We would drive to go to shopping in Chicago, and we'd go to New York and uh, go, go, go to Jewtown oh. and just stock up. I mean, that's how bad we were, but God has kind of helped us and delivered us. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because, Thank uh, you, Jesus. Uh, we, we were stuck, and, and I, was the, I was one of the ringleaders. I mean, when they talk <laughs> about buying suits and buying ties oh, and buying, know. listen, we, we were there for every yes. sale. Yes. And so I thank God for your testimony and now tell us about, about, about your choir, because I've seen them. They've been on TV. They've been to churches and everywhere. Uh, and as you've done that, you're still doing that, right? I am still doing that. And it's so interesting you say that I was on TikTok uh, Friday night making some videos because I learned how to make some videos on TikTok. You know, I do my... All right. You know, I do different things for TikTok and Instagram and all the other social media, Facebook. But I was so fascinated with TikTok and the three people in the video. And one of my patients, she taught me how to do it. So I said, it's a ministering tool because you don't know who needs the Lord and how they're going to meet the Lord. 
but God's Hands of Praise started 27 years ago. And um, my daughter, Mike, and I signed for church, We Shall Be Holding, by Vicki Winans. And um, people came to me afterwards and said, you need to you know, teach a class. I said, I'm too busy. My daughter and I, we do that. And I teach it at my daughter's school. And um, I said, and this one little girl by the name of Megan Prince King, she would look at me like this. And I said, baby, what's wrong? She said, God told me to tell you something. I said, don't tell me, I don't wanna know. I even went to go visit Burns so I didn't have to come to City Temple, so I didn't have to run into that little girl, okay? So one day she was just, I could just feel her breathing down my back. And I turned around and she was doing like this. And I said, okay, what did God tell you? She said, God told me to tell you to teach the class and he was gonna do something great through this class. Mm. I didn't know, out of the mouth of babes, that class started with eight people. It grew that first concert, 28. Then it went to 38. Then it went to 48. Then it went to 60, 65, 75, all the way, I over 125 people have served in that choir who have gone on to grad school, who've gone on to get degrees in sign language, married. That little girl now is married. She's a nurse with two little children. Her husband's a dentist, you know, and Hands of Praise came out of you know, knowing that every, everybody may not be able to play or sing or be able to preach, but maybe they could learn to use these 10 fingers and be able to minister to the hearing impaired because they too need to be ministered to. They need concerts. So that first year I went to my husband, he said, do it. He was even in the choir and he said, let's do it. And from there, it just grew, grew, grew and concerts at Masonic Temple. We went to Orchestra Hall, we went to the Music Hall, we City Temple, we went to so many churches all over Chicago, Canada, Bermuda. We went all over the world just signing for the Lord. And um, the choir is still together, God's hands of praise. We just ministered when City Temple reopened three weeks ago, we were the first choir to minister and um, I'm still holding on, I'm still teaching, and I'm still directing because the new generation in my church or whomever, we, we invite anyone who wants to join, they are fascinated with learning a language. And do you know these children can put that language on their resume, that they know basic sign language to communicate with someone and go on and get their undergrad degree or their master's or PhD and become interpreters. You can open your own company just providing interpretation services. Wow. So interpret, yes, interpreting services. You get your license, you are now called upon to do contracts after contract. So, so but it's, it was a blessing, it is a blessing. And so many of my young people have gone on to do great things. And Micah is still signing whenever I call on her. And uh, sometimes I can get my little one to sign, Aaron. But usually uh, when I call on my members, they're there to minister for the church, give back, pay for it, and use your talent. And they're still excited about God's hands of praise. And other choirs have birthed out of God's hands of praise. Other choirs around the country have seen us on YouTube and uh, seen us on um um, and, and on television, Comcast K, all over, they said we would like to start. So many, many choirs, praise the Lord, have come out of God's hands of praise ministry. Wow, that that's impressive. Now I got to go back to this because you struck a chord with me. You know that ministry, like you said, can 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 become a business where you you got. Uh, you say in, to, in the area of interpretation, communication. Uh, and I was thinking about that because I know we use music as therapy right. in a lot of cases. I used to work with Detroit East uh, over here on the East side. And uh, every year there was a set time they would allow us to come in. The late Odie Anderson used to be yes. the director and mm -hmm. she would have me to come. And uh, whereas the patients didn't communicate 
But when we started doing music and I had them just singing, you know, they open up. They open I up. mean, smiles came on their face when they heard music and yeah. they were learning how to communicate. So th this is great information to know. And uh, uh, while we, are we doing that, uh, uh, let everybody know how they can reach you, get in touch with you and tell them about your program when it airs. Okay. And uh, uh, what time and all that. Just give us that information right, right now. Um, you can reach me at 313-664-4900. 313-664-4900. Also, you can reach me on uh, my on, on the internet through Dr. Kim M Inspires, with an S, drkiminspires.com. That's my website. Or you can email me at drkimlogan at gmail.com. Drkimlogan at gmail.com. And I'll be more than happy to respond to your email, phone calls, and reach back out to you. I also want to recognize the late Brenda Scott and uh, the late Reginald, Minister Reginald Sampson. The, he introduced me to um, the late Councilwoman Brenda Scott. She introduced me to the late uh, Kate Everett, Councilwoman Kate Everett. Um, um, Coleman A. Young introduced me to the late Councilwoman Irma Henderson, the late Jackie Curry, our city clerk. See, I'm calling some names now because the council, and I will never forget the work and effort of uh, um, State Representative Carolyn Cheeks Kilpatrick, Congresswoman, who yeah. saw something in me through my godbrother, James Slaughter, her executive and helped me get my first contract in the prisons. And she said, this is what we need, Kim. We need people to help them write resumes, how to learn sign language. I got a contract at Operation Get Down with, mm -hmm. uh, uh, with Bernard Kilpatrick. And he yeah. said, and I said, I want to teach the men coming off the streets communication skills, resume writing, but I want to teach them sign language. You know, and something as simple as, oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. And they would take that. I would play the songs from St. James. I would take all the different songs and guess what? Ministering to them through those songs. They were signing to the words of that music. And so yeah. therefore, they began to understand more about the love of Jesus. Tell us about Jesus, Dr. Kim. That's why God put me there. And so with that, I'm able to use the services. Friends have opened businesses. Uh, this is so many avenues, you know, but you got to think outside the box. And my brother Derek used to tell me, you got to think outside the box. Get out of your comfort zone and be able to take Kim Logan community. He said, where do you see Kim Logan? Do you see it as a, and my husband and I built you know, a, a, a enterprise. We built a very successful enterprise based on the way I communicated, helping uh, the late uh, Pastor Odell Jones. He said, come on. And, and um, Pastor Matthews, you know, uh, all these different ministers, Corinthian, Pastor Jordan, Dr. Jordan, Kim, let's do this. And they believed in me and they opened their hearts to me. And then um, Bishop Ellis, uh, Bishop Van, uh, like I said, you, so many of the pastors have just opened their hearts to me and they send their church members to me, you know, and mm -hmm. that's a tremendous blessing. So now I'm booked from nine to nine every day, sometimes 11, Pastor. But um, I, it's a blessing to be able to give back and help others. So I look forward to continue to build our friendship, our relationship, as we go to continue in greatness, what you've done, how you've impacted my life, how you impacted my life for change and better, and to get out of that box. Let's get you on radio. Let's get your voice out there. This is what we need to do. And you let me stand on your shoulders to be the Kim Logan that I am today, to be the Dr. Kim Logan Nolan of now yeah well i know they probably want to get you back too <laughs> on, on every one of those radio stations i mean those those were some wonderful days yes. sharing at, at that 1440 and uh, doing doing ministry day to day 
uh, and uh, and the Lord just just wrote it out, and you just walked in God's purpose, and and God has fulfilled every promise. That's that's all it is, yeah, and you've just been obedient, and and look at what God has done, and look at what God is doing, and listen, God only knows. I have seen His heard what He's getting ready to do. Oh, because I'm you're excited. still writing, you're still counseling. And mm -hmm. even today on Sunday, now when we were talking before this interview, you were in the office working, seeing counseling, doing a counseling session. I was doing a counseling session and you called me and I said, oh, I'm, I'll be there in just a minute. I was closing yeah. out with prayer because I'm yeah. here Sundays from nine to nine o'clock. My Lord, my God, you know. And uh, uh, listen, friends, I know you're there. I know it's Sunday. Some of you all probably just finishing up your Sunday meal. But uh, if you missed any part of this, you'll be able to go back and uh, see it in its entirety. But Dr. Kim Logan Nolan, one of our own right here in the city of Detroit. That's right. And I love how you say uh, 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 the, our late Mayor Coleman Young put it. Now we're going to give you this contract, but you got to stay in the city. <laughs> You got to put your practice here. You got to live in Detroit. You got to work for Detroiters. And, and, and again, that model, that, that model right there is what we need now. I sometimes get in trouble with a lot of my successful friends and they come telling me where they live. I said, but that's not where you, you make your money. I said, and don't be like these other folk. They got their stores down here. They got their shops down here. They got their businesses down here. They, they liquor stores down here, they beauty shop. They got their nail salons and all their beauty supply stores down here, but they don't live down here. They don't live down here. Now, don't you be like them just cause you, you know, build your home here, get you a home here, buy you some land here and build from the ground instead of going out there. Uh, uh, and I'm just praying that, that, that we get it. I, I want you to just, just from your entrepreneurial experience as, as a black businesswoman and a black saved professional and skilled, give some counsel, especially to the rise of our black women in, uh, in business as entrepreneur, as well as the men as well, uh, some sound advice about networking and, and partnerships and, and how we should you know, keep our dollars in our community like others community do, mm -hmm. where that money can go in a circle, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, we can be a blessing. You have a business, I have a business, and we can partner and uh, 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 use one another's business, send you clients, you send me. We're not, we're not doing that. I'm trying to understand, doctor, the, the mentality of our people. Can you help me with that? Yes, I think we've gotten to a point where I've got minds, you get yours. And we've lost the integrity of helping one another. You're helping me right now, giving me this platform. But it means that we have to be intentional. And I say this to Black entrepreneurs. We must be intentional about helping one another. We must be loyal about keeping our dollars um, in the city. There's a Black woman who owns a, a store downstairs. I take my dollars to her downstairs, the fashion place. You need to come to the Fisher Building and shop at the fashion place. Um, there are you know, two Black brothers who opened a men's clothing store here in the Fisher Building. Pastor, amazing, beautiful clothes, OK? Um, so we have lost the intent of helping one another. We've lost the direction and we've allowed corporate America or you know, the dollar change to say, well, I'll, I'll do business with them because I can't count on you to be there or do what you say you're going to do because you're black. We have been given, that's a myth. There are responsible people and with integrity, with uh, the ability to do good business. I'm one of them, you're one of them. And if I say I'm going to be here at nine o'clock in the morning, I'm going to be here for you. If I'm going to be here at nine o'clock at night, I'm going to be here for you. You can count on that. But we have gotten to the point where we have co-signed, co-signed bad behavior. And we keep listening to things that are out there versus saying, no, this is what we need to do to help our communities, to help our people, to help do and push our, ourselves 
to the next level. So it's not about me. It's about we. It's about how we can help each other move forward to excellence. So number one, we have to be intentional. Number two, we have to be accountable. That's important. We got to be accountable to one another as African Americans, as entrepreneurs. We must sit down and at the table together three, four, five times a year. And now we must acknowledge each other. Let's celebrate the wins. Celebrate. I celebrate you getting that contract. I may not have gotten it, but maybe I could be a consultant for you. All right. But we tend to forget how we have gotten there. And so we have to reach back the highest level of self-esteem. Listen to me now, ladies and gentlemen, the highest level of self-esteem is reaching back and pulling someone else ahead of you. That's the highest level. When I can reach back and pull you ahead of me, and then therefore I'm a part of your success. So number one, intentional and being intentional, accountability, acknowledge, and we must be loyal to our people, our dollars, our community, and we must build up. Because like the late Mayor Coleman A. Young said to me, I got you little girl, but you got to do your part. And there you are here for our people. You are here. I went away to school and, and the late Sam Logan of the Michigan Chronicle, my uncle, he allowed Arthur and I to write articles in the Chronicle on marriage and relationship. That led to WMUZ, Radio One, us being on Radio One, the late Bo Vincent, you know, who was our producer. And let me say this, you know, he said, whatever you do, give your best, give your all. And don't forget, and when I ran for city council in 2009, these individuals came together to help me to build that voice. So we need to recognize your voice. What's your voice? Dr. Kim is here to hear your voice. Dr. Kim wants to help you. I've been doing this 40 years. What can I do to help you excel? And that's what we don't, we don't want to do. See, the other communities, they reach out, they help, they build, they pull up, they teach. We must do the same. So whatever Dr. Kim can do, you know, because I'm not going to be here forever, Pastor. I got to pass the mallet on. The, the Jackie Currys and the Irma Henderson and the Rosa Parks, they passed the mallet on to me. Now we got to get ready to pass it on. But how are we going to do that if we don't collectively dream and see the vision together? And so those are the things that I'm doing. I'm not co-signing bad behavior. I'm going to help whoever God sends my way. I'm going to be intentional. I'm not going to hold a grudge against whoever. We're going to work together to see that your business thrive. If I'm selling the house, I'm calling a black realtor. My realtor is black, okay? And so therefore, my dentist is black. My OBGYN is black, all right? I do have some doctors who are not only because they weren't in my network. But I tell you this, I am going to seek out my people, God's people, to be able to put those dollars into their businesses. And that's what I do. I recycle my dollars and I put them with black businesses. That's what I do, Pastor. Well, y'all heard it. Y'all heard the doctor say it. She preached it. She spoke it out of her mouth. And, and I appreciate that because, you know, sometimes people hear us. And, and when God sends a witness to echo and to say it so eloquently and proper, I mean, just from your heart, this is what our community need to do. Or right. sometimes I would ride through communities and get upset. I go through Hamtramck and get mad. I go <laughs> because I go through certain areas of the city, go through Dearborn and just try to avoid riding down Michigan or up through that area because we have been here and and like you said we got black doctors we got lawyers we got we got designers we got mechanics we got engineers we got singers actresses musicians in every area of profession uh there are some blacks mm -hmm. you know we got black golfers and black uh, uh athletes black i mean black race car drivers now and and, and black gymnasts and uh, uh, F, uh, just everything. Everything. And Bishop, I just opened my own entertainment company two years ago 
Yeah. And now I'm doing films. I'm doing mental health films and giving actors a sounding board of you. You can use your talent with live. And my production company is, you know, rising out of the ashes when my building burned down and getting breast cancers, rising above the ashes. And that's what I've done. Production, mm -hmm. film production. We're doing films. And I'm doing something now called Right Along with Dr. Kim. I'm yeah. doing short stories with men in counseling. And now mm -hmm. these are all on social media now, helping other people through their journeys. Wow, wow, this, this, this is awesome. And uh, uh, there, there's a lot, I knew, that's what I said. I looked at this, this bio when I downloaded off my email. I said, now nah, she done done much. There's about 10 more pages need to be added oh. to this. <laughs> and I appreciate, I appreciate you sharing your love because I've been saying this even to my music community, even to pastors, we are better together. We are. You know, uh, uh, all of this, this, this crab mentality and don't want to see others succeed and, and all of that. Uh, and I appreciate your book. I got to get my personal copy. Yes, it's I here waiting. Order it. wait, you know, wait. It's here waiting for you. It's here waiting for you, Pastor. That, that co-signing bad behavior is, is an awesome title because I've been guilty of it. Others been guilty of it. And a lot of us need to understand we've been guilty of, uh, you know, turning our head and not saying nothing when we should have, even in ministry, even in my students and music. I mean, just so much uh, can go under that particular heading, co-signing bad behavior, co-mission or omission. And I got, you know? let me tell you about the cover. A gentleman yeah. by the name of Ennis Woods uh, designed this cover with my marketing director, Al Rogers. Mm -hmm. He was a graphic artist in high school at Cass Tech. And he always loved it. And I told him the theme of what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And he's African-American. Yeah. And he did this design, laid it out with the pen on the paper. Don't put your name, don't co-sign. So I want to yeah. thank personally Mr. Ennis Woods for his contribution to this book. Yeah, yes. Listen, uh, now now let them know where they can order all of your books. Mm -hmm. On my website, www.drkiminspires.com. It's about, it's at 200 or so bookstores, Walmart, Target, yeah. uh, you name is out there. But if I will do an autograph copy for you, go to my website, click the button, and we will send you your book out the next day. www.drkiminspires with an S dot com. And you can Google me and you'll see up under Dr. Kim Logan Nolan, my website. Oh, wow. Awesome. Well, listen, doctor, I am so appreciative of you taking time out of your busy schedule to just share with us on this platform. And listen, we, we've got, I'm going to be contacting you uh, for some other things, your professional services, and, um, uh, and you'll be on this coming Tuesday uh, on Live to Be Well. Is that right? Well, right on, on your Facebook page. And Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, you can see me then. And then my new television programs, uh, they will be aired. And I'll post that on my Facebook page with Live to Be Well with the 3ABN Dare to Dream Network and 3ABN Christian Network. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, listen, I, I am so excited and overwhelmed. Listen, friends, again, as we get ready to go, uh, if you missed any part of this, go to Bishop Andre S. Woods Facebook page. It'll be on YouTube on all my pages. I'm, I'm sending it to every platform I got. Bless so me. you'll be able to find it on the public platform and on specifically this particular page. Dr. Dr. Kim Logan Nolan, I want to appreciate you and thank you. And, and, and I always close with prayer and yes. thanksgiving because I just believe that as God has blessed us, he's not through yet. Mm -mm. Uh, and, and I believe the latter, according to the word of God, ah. will be greater than the former. Oh, We've seen God. some great days, but there's so many ahead of you. So yes. let's pray. Father, we thank you today for this wonderful privilege of fellowship. I thank you for my sister in the Lord, Dr. Kim Logan Nolan, 
Thank you for her journey, God. Thank you for every sacrifice she's made to become a vessel and an instrument for your glory. Thank you for her professionalism, God, and giving her life back to you to be a service to people everywhere. Now, God, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you will bless whatever her hands touch. According to uh, the book of Psalms uh, 90 and 17, now, Lord, let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon her and establish the work of her hands. Yea, Lord, the work of our hands establish thou it. Bless her going out and her coming in, God. We pray that through her ministry and through her practice, that folk will be edified and God, you will be glorified. And we ask this in Jesus' matchless holy name. Amen and thank God. Thank oh, praise God for you. And listen, listen, friends, join us. Now, she spoke about having a black realtor. We're going to have a professional on with us next Sunday, this time, 4 p.m. Faye Smith Baker will be my guest. Yes. And uh, you don't want to miss this entrepreneur story as well. Dr. Kim Logan Nolan, bless you, woman of God. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Thank and you. to Thank all you. of our friends joining us, Bishop Andre Woods, I want to command the blessings of the Lord to yes. overtake you. That is my prayer to next time in Jesus' name. See you next time. God bless Bye -bye. you. Thank you, Bishop. Bye-bye, everyone. Love you. Love you more.